Hi guys and welcome to an introduction on how to fly a VOR approach. In this video we will take a look at the VOR runway 25 approach into Echo Papa Lima Lima, which is an airport serving the city of Łódź in the center of Poland. This is the actual procedure that I have flown multiple times during my instrument rating, so it's the one I'm most familiar with. It's a very simple VOR approach, so it's perfect to start out with. First, I'm going to do a little explaining on what the VOR approach is, and then we're going to look at the Jepson plate, and finally I will demonstrate it into the flight sim. So I hope you guys learned something today, and uh, let's get right to it. Okay, so first it's very important to understand what a VOR approach is, why it's different from an ILS approach, and what it is you have to look out for. A VOR approach is a non-precision approach, which means there is no vertical guidance available to guide an airplane safely to the runway. The task of a non-precision approach is only to get the airplane down to minimum descent altitude or minimum descent height. This is the lowest altitude we can fly at when we don't have visual contact with the runway. Visual contact means that you can see any of the references you can see on the screen. So what this basically means is, if you can see the runway, the runway lights, or the approach lighting system, you're good to go. When we have visual contact with the runway, we can start our final approach visually. If we don't see the runway when we're at the minimum descent altitude, we can either stay on that altitude until we hit the missed approach point, or initiate a go around immediately. This is where the big difference is between a non-precision approach and a precision approach like an ILS. An ILS will guide the airplane to the decision height and lines it up with the runway center line. A non-precision approach just brings you down to a safe altitude and point from where you should be able to see the runway. From there it's up to you to line up and land. The VOR approach uses, surprise surprise, a VOR as the primary navigation aid. Following a specific radial and descent profile is going to set us up for a visual final approach. Since there is no vertical guidance with the VOR approach, we have to read the chart very carefully. So let's do that right now. Okay, so here we have the approach plate for the VOR runway 25 approach into Wuch Poland. It may look a bit confusing, but we'll do a step-by-step -step briefing of this whole plate. Pilots always make approach briefings, even if it's about an approach that they've flown hundreds of times. So it's a very important for any pilot to do a proper briefing. So let's start breaking it down. We always start in the right top corner to check if we have the appropriate approach plate in front of us. In this case we can see this is VOR runway 25 for Wuch. Next, we check the chart number and the validity of the chart to check if it's still valid for today's approach. This information is especially important when flying with more than one flight crew member to check if you are both looking at the same plate. Next, we check if we have the right frequencies for the tower and ATIS. In our case, it's not very important because we're flying in the sim, but in real life, this is crucial information. From here, we read normal left to right. So the first thing we see is which VOR we are using and which frequency it has. We are going to use the Lima Oscar Zulu VOR. So the frequency we have to put into the navigation radio is 112.4. Then there is the final approach course, which is 243 degrees in our case. The minimum altitude at 4.1 nautical miles DME from the Lima Oscar Zulu VOR, which is 2200 feet. This point is important because from here we will start our final descent to the minimum descent altitude. Next there is our minimum descent altitude and the airport elevation. And over here we have the minimum safe altitude around the Lima Oscar VOR. It shows that the minimum safe altitude east of the VOR is 2600 feet and west of the VOR is 2700 feet. Now we're going to check the missed approach procedure. Going around is a heavy workload situation, so you have to brief this carefully and make sure you fully understand the procedure. There will be no time to check this when you're actually going around, especially in single pilot operations. 
thankfully this misapproach procedure is very straightforward. It requires us to fly straight, climb to 2000 feet, turn to the right towards Lima Oscar Zulu VOR and continue climbing to 3000 feet. After this we can contact ATC for further instructions if necessary or they will give us directions. Next we check the narrow segment below the missed approach procedure. It says that our altimeter has to be set to use hectopascals and not inches of mercury. The transition level and the transition altitude are also mentioned here. The next segment gives us some specific information about this approach. First it says that we need a DME to complete this procedure and that the final approach offset is 2 degrees off from the center line. Remember when I said that a VOR approach only serves, a, serves to get you down to the minimum descent altitude safely? So this is why we will fly the last part visually to line ourselves up and land. Now let's move to the plan view section of the plate. Here we can see the top down situation of the approach. As you can see it's very straightforward so it's an ideal approach to start with. We see the Lima Oscar Zulu VOR with its own holding pattern. This hold can be flown at flight level 110 at maximum and at 3000 feet minimum. The maximum speed in the hold is 230 knots. The abbreviation Mike Hotel Alpha stands for minimum holding altitude. We can see that our inbound track of the holding pattern is 238 degrees and our outbound radial will be 243 degrees. So when we're overhead the VOR we have to make a change of only 5 degrees to the right to get on our final approach course. Here's the final descent point named Foxtrot Delta 25 and it's, and it's located at 4.1 nautical miles DME from the Lima Oscar Zulu VOR. At 8.7 nautical miles DME is the threshold of runway 25. Also on this plate are the obstacles that may cause a hazard when flying around Wuch. Wuch was an industrial city and has plenty of chimneys scattered across the city. The biggest of the bunch is located just south of the final approach course, so it's important to stick to the procedure if you don't want to hit it. And finally, we see an indication of the missed approach procedure. Okay, that was the horizontal part of the plate. Let's check the profile view section of this procedure, which gives us the vertical information. Our profile view starts at the Lima Oscar Zulu VOR at 3000 feet. From there, we will fly on the 243 radial while descending to 2200 feet. Between reaching 2200 feet and Foxtrot Delta 25, we have to configure the aircraft and decelerate. In the sim I'm using the Carinado Phenom 300, which has more flap settings than your average twin engine piston airplane. So in my case I already lowered the flaps to stage 1 while on the inbound track to the Masker Zulu. During the instrument training, which is usually done on small twin engine piston planes like the Diamond 42 or Technum 2006, on which I've flown, you would start lowering the flaps, gear and do the landing checklist before reaching Foxtrot Delta 25. So you can be fully focused on the final descent part of the approach when you reach it. On top of the profile view you can see the altitude checks. Because we're flying a non-precision approach it means we have to do the vertical guidance ourselves by using these numbers. At the top it says the distance from the Lima Oscar Zulu VOR and at the bottom the altitude we should be at when we're at that specific distance. So at 5 nautical miles from Lima Oscar Zulu we should have descended to 1900 feet and at 6 nautical miles we should be at 1570 feet. It's very important to brief these numbers and repeat them when you're actually flying the procedure. So upon reaching 5 nautical miles DME you call out the difference with what is written on the plate. Example. If we're exactly at 1,900 feet at 5 nautical miles DME, we say something like this. 5 miles DME on, on slope. Next, 1,570 feet at 6 miles. If we were to be at 1,850 feet at 5 miles DME, we would say something like 
5 miles DME, 50 feet low. Next, 1570 feet at 6 miles DME. To the left, we see a weird looking M. This is our missed approach point. As you can see, it's directly over the threshold of the runway. Also here is the abbreviation Tango Charlie Hotel. This stands for Threshold Crossing Height and a 50. This means if we fly the whole procedure exactly as we should, we should cross the threshold at 50 feet. Upon reaching Foxtrot Delta 25 at 4.1 nautical miles DME, we will start a continuous descent at a 3.15 degree descent angle and start the timer, which is something I completely forgot to do in the sim. So uh, sorry about that. A continuous descent final approach or CDFA means we try to keep a fixed rate of descent throughout the final approach. The rate of descent you will need depends on your final approach speed. In our case, that speed will be around 120 knots which means we need a descent rate of 669 feet per minute. The G1000 avionics only gives, up, gives us uh, descent rates in increments of 50, so we'll try to keep our descent rate between 650 and 700 feet per minute. To the right, you can see what the lighting system is at the airport, and serves as a recognition point to make sure you have the correct runway in front of you. In this case, the runway is equipped with High Intensity Approach Lighting System, or high ALS, Papi Lights, Precision Approach Path Indicator Lights, which are situated at the left side of the runway, and Runway End Identification Lights. Also noted here is our initial climb out, altitude, and direction in case of a go-around. And finally, on the bottom of the plate, we have the minimums and the circle to land procedures for this approach. As you can see, our MDA for this approach is 1420 feet and our minimum descent height is 813 feet. The RVR, or Runway Visual Range, for category Alpha and Bravo aircraft is 1500 meters and for category Charlie and Delta aircraft, the RVR is 2400 meters. To the right, we can see the circle to land minimas for this airport for certain speeds. The circle to land procedure is something for a different video, because it, there's a lot more to it than just these numbers. Alright, now that we have briefed this approach and fully understand it, it's time to head over to the sim and fly it. I'll see you guys there. Here we are in the sim. As you can see, we are on the 238 degrees track inbound Lima Oscar Zulu at 3.5 nautical miles away. We are at 3000 feet and we're already on flap setting 1. When the sim, sim will be unpaused, we're gonna track the radial until we are right above the VOR. We know when we are over the VOR when we are in the so called cone of silence. This is the area right above VOR when the radios don't pick up a reliable signal and you will see that the HSI will disappear from the screen. When it reappears it's time to turn onto the 243 degrees radial and start our descent towards 2200 feet. Ok so here we go. Ok, so we're one mile out, so let's change the course to 243 degrees, same for the heading and we're gonna set our altitude for 2200 feet.
As you can see, the HSI has disappeared. That means we can start turning and start descending. We are almost at 2200 feet, which means we soon have to start configuring the aircraft for landing. Speed check, gear down. Speed checks, flaps full. Landing checklist, gear down, three green, flaps full, landing checklist complete. Setting go around altitude 3000 feet. Next altitude check, five miles DME, we should be at 1900 feet. Five DME, sixty feet low. Next six miles DME, altitude one thousand five hundred seventy feet. Six miles DME on slope. Approaching minimums. Minimums runway inside. Decision continue. Five hundred. And there we go. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you now understand how to fly a basic VOR approach. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments and I'll definitely take a look. But for now, keep learning and soft landings to all of you.